welcome back to career power hyderabad powered by adda 247 so students uh, today we'll discuss our current affairs but before going to it so we will have a brief about our new five stage method discussion so after long research by our r&d team so we came up with a unique way to learn current affairs 10 times effectively so we'll see a brief about this five stage method so this five stage method we will have the first stage where headlines are provided with blanks so the blanks are provided so that the student will have a question a question will rise in the mind of the student so what would be the answer so to know the answer so you need to go into the stage 2 the detailed analysis so in in our detailed analysis so we will cover the entire topic uh, be it be the uh, details about the current affairs or be it be the uh, static gk so we'll cover all the uh, portion related to the current affair in news so student will have a clarity on the entire current affair and he can answer any question in the examination it will help him a lot so uh, we will have the third stage called one word key points so in this third stage of one word key points uh, we will have a single word from every current affair we will draw a single word from every current affair so that the student can by heart the word at the end days of preparation so these one word key points will be used uh, at the uh, last days of preparation so easiest way to cover the entire current affairs for your examinations so not only this we have a stage 4 of important mcqs where after the uh, current affairs uh, video the next day we will have a video on the important mcqs so how questions are framed in the examination based on your current affairs will be present in these mcqs so student can answer the mcqs and they can enhance their uh, revision so in the stage 5 uh, section wise revision so after every week we will have a weekly revision of the current affairs so that you can remember your current affairs for a longer time period so uh, uh, this is the best way to remember current affairs so we'll go into the headlines today so headlines of 13 14 uh, june 2021 so the first headline is ministry of ayush has launched an app and what is the name of the app so ministry of ayush they came up with an app so what is the name of the app so next headline is uh, which of the uh, like which country became the world's first mask free country from june 15 so from june 15 a country is going to become mask free so what is the name of the country so the next mc uh, next current affair is mylab appoints uh, whom as their brand ambassador so mylab a biotechnological company has appointed a film star as their brand ambassador so who is that film star so the next mcq is about who was appointed as the secretary general of un conference on trade and development so who was recently appointed as the secretary general of UN conference on trade and development so next one is about india's forex reserves so india's forex reserves has crossed a record mark and what is the record mark so what is that amount which india crossed recently in forex reserves so next current affair is related to a program called the gargar ration program so it was launched by which bank so which bank in india launched this gargar ration program So next current affair is related to a science and technology news where IIT Roorkee professor has bagged an award NSG award National Security Guards award for his innovation so what is that innovation what is the product so the next current affair is, is about india's rank in global skills report 2021 so what is the india's rank so we need to see what is the india's rank so next is a space news where european space agency He is going to launch a new mission called Envision. So, to which planet by 2030? So, which planet does the European Space Agency is planning to send a mission? So, sports news we can see. So, who wins the French Open title 2021? So, next coming to books and authors. So, whom in the world book was written by whom? So, we need to know who is the author. So next is about days. So days play a very vital role in your current affairs. 
so international albinism awareness day is observed on which date world blood donor day is observed on which date so we need to see these important days so next is mahavir chakra recipient brigadier so he recently passed away so he is a mahavir chakra recipient and also a brigadier who served the indian navy uh, in the uh, indo pak war of 1965 so we need to know who is the brigadier so the last question the last headline is about a village in bandipura jammu and kashmir so it is the first india's village to inoculate all the adults so inoculate means to vaccinate so first village in india to vaccinate all its adults above 18 years of age so these are the headlines for today so we will go into the detailed analysis we'll see every current affair in detail so first current affair for today the national news ministry of oish launches the namaste yoga app so in the cut and razor event of the 7th international day of yoga which will be celebrated on 21st june so in this cut and razor event so the ministry of ayush and the national institute of yoga they launched a mobile application called namaste yoga so this app was launched to raise awareness about yoga and to make it accessible for the larger community so that is the purpose of the app called namaste yoga so the theme of the international day for yoga this year is yoga at home and yoga with family so that is the main purpose of having a yoga the namaste yoga app so it is to create the awareness about the importance of yoga and mainly during the times of covid so how yoga helps during the covid how yoga helps pregnant women and all these things you can find in the mobile app called namaste yoga so if you go to the background of the international day of for yoga so united nations has passed a resolution in december 2014 and proclaimed 21st june as the international day of yoga so first yoga day was celebrated in 2015 at rajpath new delhi where nearly 35985 people participated in this event so which created a guinness world record so this is about the background of the international day for yoga so uh, once again we'll see this current affair so ministry of yoga launches the namaste app so please remember this point so a mobile app called namaste yoga is launched the theme of international day for yoga 2021 is yoga at home and yoga with people so the app is to create awareness about yoga so coming to the ministry of state independent charge of yoga is kiran rijuji so recently kiran rijuji replaced shripad eshonaik so earlier shripad eshonaik was the ministry of state ayush but now presently it is kiran rijuji so he is the ministry of state independent charge for ayush so when going into the background of the international day of yoga so international day of yoga is celebrated on 21st june and un passed a resolution in december 2014 So first yoga day is celebrated in 2015 at Rajpath, New Delhi. Okay. So we'll go into the next current affair, international news. So Israel is the country to become the world's first mask-free from June 15th. So from June 15th, so Israel Health Ministry is uh, uh, giving a new guideline of mask-free. So not to wear any masks. So the rule of applying masks in closed places will end from June 15th. so already so uh, the rule of applying masks outside has already been abolished in israel so in public places there is no need of having a mask only in closed places like railway stations movie theaters shopping malls you need to have your mask but from june 15 israel is having mask free so it is the world's first country to be mask free so israel started their covid vaccination earlier in december 2020 itself so they almost vaccinated their adult population and now they are vaccinating the population between 12 to 15 years children so 12 to 15 year children are presently vaccinated in israel and the entire elder population is already been vaccinated so that is why they are having this no mask rule okay so this is about israel so israel to become the world's first mask free country from june 15 So there are few points to remember about Israel because Israel is frequently in news. 
So the Israel president who was recently elected, Isaac Her Herzog, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel capital Jerusalem and Israel currency Israeli shekel. Okay, so please remember these points also because the Israeli president was recently elected, Isaac Herzog. Israeli Prime Minister is also in news, Benjamin Netanyahu. Israeli capital Jerusalem, Israeli currency, Israeli shekel. So we'll go into the next current affair is about appointment news. So biotechnology company MyLab appoints Akshay Kumar as their brand ambassador. So they discovered, they launched their new uh, COVID self-test kit called CoviShelf. So MyLab in India launches the CoviShelf is COVID-19 self-test kit. So to promote this COVID uh, self-test kit, so they appointed Akshay Kumar as their brand ambassador. So Akshay Kumar, film star, you know, film stars have a lot of influence on people. So by making film star as a brand ambassador, so they can play a vital role in educating people about the efficacy of the products related to COVID-19 and making people to fight against COVID-19. So my lab has the presence over many sectors like diagnostics, food safety, agriculture and veterinary medicine. So they have a lot of experience in biotechnological industry. So they have launched their new product called Covi Shelf. And who is the brand ambassador here? Akshay Kumar is a brand ambassador for this Covi Shelf. So you can see the picture there, Akshay Kumar promoting the Covi Shelf. So we'll go into the next current affair is about the Secretary General of United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. So Costa Rican economist and former Vice President of Costa Rica, Rebecca Grinspan has been appointed as the Secretary General of United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. So she was proposed by the UN Secretary General and, it, and the UN General Assembly has approved her appointment on 11th June 2020. So she is the first woman and Central American to head the organization. So please remember this point is very very important because she is the first woman to head the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. So prior to this position, she worked as the United Nations Development Program Regional Director for Latin American and Caribbean region. So we'll see some points related to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. So it was formed in 1964. Headquarters is in Geneva. The prime objective of this trade and conference organization is to formulate policies related to development, including, I mean, development in trade, aid, transport, finance and technology. So the main aim of this UN Conference on Trade and Development is to formulate policies related to trade and development. So also we'll see the Costa Rican capital, San Jose, and Costa Rican currency, Costa Rican column. So who is in news? It is the Secretary General of United Nations Conference of uh, Trade and Development. So who was recently appointed as the Secretary General? It is Rebecca Greenspan. So she is a Costa Rican economist and a former Vice President. So she was proposed by the U UN Secretary General and approved by the UN General Assembly and she is the first woman and the first Central American to hold the post of the Secretary General of UNCTAD. Okay. Also remember uh, UN uh, Conference on Trade and Development was established in 1964 headquarters in Geneva. Also you can remember Costa Rican capital San Jose and Costa Rican currency Costa Rican Cola. So next current affairs is related to India's forex reserves. So India's forex reserves has crossed the benchmark of $600 US dollars. So India soon to become the fourth largest reserves globally. So according to the weekly data provided by RBI, so RBI provides a weekly data on the forex reserves. So according to the weekly data, so presently we have 605.008 US dollars, billion US dollars. So in our forex reserves, so the first country, the highest country to have forex reserves is China, next is Japan, next is Switzerland, fourth is Russia, fifth is India. So India and Russia are very near, so this is Russia, spelling mistake, sorry. 
So India and Russia are very near. So India has 605.008 billion dollars. Russia has 605.200 billion dollars. So you are very near to uh, be placed at the fourth rank, replacing Russia. So this is a good sign for India. So Indian forex reserves cross the 600 billion dollar mark. So what is this forex reserve all about? So forex reserves are important assets held by RBI, the central bank, in foreign currencies as reserves. So generally India saves foreign reserves in the form of gold, dollars and IMF quota for special drawing rights. So India saves foreign reserves in the form of gold, in the form of dollar, in the form of special drawing rights. Special drawing rights are simply nothing but using, if you purchase special drawing rights, uh, you can buy any currency. It's like you are buying some tokens. Using those tokens, you can buy dollars, you can buy euros, you can buy yen, you, you can buy uh, pounds. So the, uh, these are special drawing rights which are present in IMF. So what is the purpose of having forex reserves? You know we purchase crude oil from Saudi Arabia, Iran, all the Gulf nations. So we need to pay crude oil in the form of US dollars. So in order to pay these US dollars, you need to buy dollars. So that is why RBI purchases dollars and it stores the dollars. So they can easily have transactions. They can easily pay back uh, for the crude oil purchase. So all international transactions are generally settled in US dollars. And that is why India requires US dollars for purchasing, for paying back the imports. Okay. So this is the purpose of having forex reserves. So please buy at this table. So China is first in forex reserves. Second is Japan. Third Switzerland. Fourth Russia. Fifth is India. So next current affairs for today is about IDFC First Bank. So IDFC is a subsidiary of the IDFC Bank. Uh, financial company. So it is a subsidiary of infrastructure development finance company which provides finance and advis advisory services. So IDFC first bank launches customer COVID relief Gargar ration program. So it is a unique program launched where the bank employees will provide some part of their personal income to set up a COVID care fund. So using this COVID care fund, so bank will provide relief to nearly 50,000 COVID affected low income customers of their bank. So every bank will have different groups of income customers, higher income groups, lower income groups. So IDFC First Bank will identify their low income group customers and they will provide uh, some uh, ration, like they will provide some ration program to them. So in this Gargar ration program, so every family will be provided a ration kit. So the ration kit will contain uh, like dal, rice, oil, all uh, necessary groceries. And customers who are present in cities, they will be provided a card with an amount of 1800 rupees. Okay, so they can uh, use this card to purchase groceries in the supermarkets. So Gargar ration program is launched by which bank? It is the IDFC First Bank. So every employee in the bank is contributing some amount to this fund. And using this fund, they are providing money to their, I mean, ration kits to their uh, low income group customers. Okay. So we'll see some details about the IDFC First Bank. So IDFC First Bank is a subsidiary of infrastructure development finance company, which provides finance and adv advisory services. So the CEO of the company is Vaidyanathan, headquarters is in Mumbai, and the bank is established in 2015. Okay. So see to, uh, see to these details also, remember these points, very, very useful for banking examinations. So we'll go into awards. So IIT Ruke professor bags National Security Guard award for blast resistant helmet. So Silesh Govin Ganapule, the assistant professor working at IIT Ruke. So he was conferred with the National Security Guard Counter IED, Counter Terrorism Innovator Award 2021 for his product Blast Resistant Helmet. So this helmet is used to protect the NSG guards from IED blasts and during counter terrorism activities. So presently NSG guards, NSG commandos are using uh, the normal conventional helmets. So these conventional helmets, they can't resist IED blasts. 
so you, uh, because of these ied blasts many of them are prone to traumatic brain injuries so many of these guards nsg guards in india they are prone to traumatic brain injuries so in order to rectify these problem in order to protect the guards from these ied blasts our silesh govind ganpule so he introduced he uh, uh, like he pro, uh, like he discovered this product called the blast resistant helmet so using this helmet so we can protect our soldiers so that is why he was awarded the nsg counter ied and counter terrorism innovation award 2021 so we'll go into the next current affair ranks and reports so india ranks 67th in the coursera global skills report 2021 so coursera is an american massive open learning course provider which is headquartered in california so they provide courses online regarding data science regarding artificial intelligence uh, regarding all the computer programs so india despite being evolved digitally but india continues to have a digital skill gap so there is a gap between our uh, people who are having knowledge on the new technologies artificial intelligence uh, uh, on uh, machine learning all these things so india ranks 67th overall and the rank 1 goes to switzerland rank 2 to luxembourg rank 3 austria and india ranks 67 in the global skills report 2021 so that means we need to improve our skills so there is a skill gap in india so our uh, resources our human resources are lacking some skills particularly where mo- world nations are very forward in it we are lacking behind so we need to develop our skills so india ranks 67 in the coursera global skills report 2021 okay so next is science and technology news where european space agency to launch an vision mission to venus by 2030 so in 2030 european space agency is going to launch the n vision mission to venus so venus and earth are in, are in the habitable zone of the earth uh, or the sun but venus and earth are very much very much uh, apart they are not similar so venus has a lot of high temperatures they have a lot of carbon dioxide so because of this carbon dioxide they have a lot of global warming a lot of heat temperatures so we can't sustain these temperatures even the satellites can't sustain the temperatures of venus outer atmosphere so why venus and earth are very much different in their characteristics even though being in the habitable zone of the sun so this n vision is going to study about the venus atmosphere so it is going to be launched uh, during 2030s and the spacecraft will take nearly 15 months to reach venus and 16 months to get into the orbit of venus okay so we'll see some other details related to this uh, n vision mission so earlier the european space agency has launched venus express in 25 between 20 uh, 2005 and 2014 so it was the venus express so Na- nasa also recently announced two robotic missions to venus called devensi plus and veritas and they are going to be launched between 2028 and 2030 even india also plans to launch a new orbiter shukrayan to venus in 2024 so these are all the other space agencies who are going to launch the uh, missions their own missions to venus so nasa will launch devensi plus and veritas india will launch shukrayan in 2024 so also remember european space agency headquarters paris and it is formed in the year 1975 so european space agency headquarters paris and formed in the year 1975 also remember so european space agency is going to launch n vision mission to venus in 2030 and uh, nasa is launching davensi plus and veritas between same in the same period 2028 to 2030 india is planning to launch a orbiter shukrayan to venus in 2024 so next is sports news novak djokovic he wins the french open title 2021 so he defeated stefanos of greece to lift the french open title for the second time in his career so this is his second french title french open title and overall 19th grand slam title so he is the first person in 52 years to win all the four grand, grand slams twice so novak is the first first man in 52 years 
to win all the Grand Slams twice. So he won Australian Open nine times, Wimbledon five times, US Open three times, and French Open twice. So first man in 52 years to win all the Grand Slams twice. So please remember this point. Maybe an important question. So it is his 19th Grand Slam title, and he defeated Stefanos of Greece to achieve the French Open title. So we'll see the winners of the French Open title 2021 in this slide. So men's singles Novak Djokovic of Serbia, women's singles Barbora Krasikova of Czech Republic, and also you can see men's doubles, women's doubles, mixed doubles. So also by heart this slide the winners of French Open 2021. So next is uh, the news about books and of authors. Home in the world, a memoir book was written by Amit Sen. So Amit Sen, so he is the author of the book Home in the World. So in this book, he will share the details about his life experiences and the idea of home according to him. And also he will discuss how Ravindranath Tagore gave him the name Amartya. So he is a very eminent economist and uh, the winner of gold Nobel Prize of Economics in 1998. So in 2012, he was conferred with the National Humanities Medal by President Obama. So these are few things about Amartya Sen. So Amartya Sen as an, in, an Indian economist, very prominent personality who designed, he one of the designer of the Human Development Index. So he wrote a book, The Home in the World, a memoir. So uh, this is about Amartya Sen. So please buy heard about him. So he won the Nobel Prize in Economics and he is conferred with the National Humanities Medal by President Obama. So the author of the book Home in the World is Amartya Sen. So we'll go into the days, important days. International Albinism Awareness Day is observed on June 13th and theme of year 2021 is Strength Beyond All Odds. So what is this albinism? So albinism is caused due to a defect in one of our genes that produces or distributes melanin. So a gene which produces melanin. Okay, so there is a defect in this gene which causes albinism. So this defect in the gene may result in absence of melanin production or reduced melanin production which will cause albinism. So this is albinism. So albinism day, awareness day is celebrated on June 13th and the theme for 2021 is strength beyond all odds. Okay. So next current affair is about the world blood donor day celebrated on June 14th. So World Blood Donor Day is celebrated on June 14th and theme for year 2021 is give blood and keep the world beating. So provide blood and keep the world beating. So you know blood is very very important nowadays because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, that is why in order to promote blood donors, in order to provide blood donations, so we, go, we took a theme called give blood and keep the world beating. So the first country for uh, the World Blood Donor Day uh, this year is Rome. So Rome, Italy is the host country for the Blood Donor Day 2021. So the aim of the day is to raise awareness about the need for safe blood and blood products for transfusion. So this is about the World Blood Donor Day which is celebrated on 14th June. So a small CK point about this blood. So Karl Landsteiner is a scientist who won Nobel Prize for his discovery of ABO blood group system. So blood group system was discovered by whom? Karl Landsteiner and he won the Nobel Prize for his discovery. So we'll next go to the persons in news. So Mahavir Chakra recipient, Brigadier Raghubir Singh passes away. So he belongs to the 18th Rajputana Rifles. He's also He also worked as the Sarpanch. So his grand doctor Chavi Rajawat is the first woman Sarpanch in India with an MBA degree. So she was recently in news, Ch uh, Chavi Rajawat. She was the first woman Sarpanch in India with an MBA degree. So Mahavir Chakra recipient, Brigadier Raghubir Singh, he recently passed away. So he was awarded Mahavir Chakra award for his gallant act of kicking out the Pakistan army uh, during the 1965 Indo-Pak war. So during the 1965 Indo-Pak war, 
Pak army was trying to occupy Harike and he, uh, Raghubir Singh with his battalion, 18 Rajput, Rajputana rifles, he protected this particular area of Harike, which is in Punjab. Okay, so this is about Raghubir Singh, Mahavir Chakra recipient Raghubir Singh. So last news for today is, Vayan village in Bandipura district, German Kashmir Union territory, the first village in India to inoculate all its adults. Inoculate means vaccinate. So first we village in India to vaccinate all its adults above 18 years of age is Vion village, Bandipura district, Jammu and Kashmir Union territory. Okay. So this village uh, records the 100% vaccination of all its people over 18 years of age. So they achieved this vaccination program by JNK model. So what is this JNK model? So JNK model is simply uh, the health workers will reach out to people instead of people coming to vaccination centers. So they will do door to door vaccination. So by the JNK model they achieved 100% vaccination of people over 18 years of age and the village uh, which achieved this record is Vion village, Bandipura district, Jammu and Kashmir union territory. So these are all the current affairs for today. So we will have a recap of all the current affairs in one words. So first keyword for today. So Namaste Yoga app is launched by Ministry of Ayush. World's first mask free country from June 15th is Israel. Uh, the brand ambassador of Kovi Shelf which was developed by MyLab is Akshay Kumar who is recently appointed as the Secretary General of United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. It is Rebecca Greenspan. So India recorded uh, a 600 billion dollar forex reserves. So India reached the mark of 600 billion forex reserves. So Gargar Ration program was launched by IDFC First Bank. IIT rookie professor Silas Govin Ganpule was awarded the NSG award for his blast resistant helmet. So Global Skills Report 2021. And India is placed at 67, so rank of India 67. European Space Agency to launch Envision mission in 2032 Venus. So French Open title was awarded to Novak Djokovic. So Novak Djokovic won the French Open title 2021. So a book Home in the World was authored by Amartya Sen. International Albinism Awareness Day is observed on June 13. World Blood Donor Day is observed on June 14. So recently, Raghubir Singh passes away. So he is the recipient of Mahavir Chakra. So Vayan village in India is the first village to inoculate all its adults. So these are all the current affairs for today. So uh, please uh, go through this PDF to have, have a revision of it. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, to follow our content and for free PDFs and for other updates, please subscribe to our Telegram channel. So thank you for today.